Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're going to talk about the Ford Ranger and more specific about the automatic 10-speed gearbox. And according to many people the new 10-speed automatic gearbox has a lot of issues and to be very honest I had issues with my car as well but in this video we, I'm going to take you through the steps I've taken to correct it. And that gearbox is most likely the most contested gearbox on the market today. Not only is it very contested, but there are also a lot of stories around. There is a story that goes around that the gearbox is self-learning, so it's learning from the driver. And that is absolutely not true. Yes, there is a learning curve on the gearbox. I rather call that a calibration cycle. And I'm going to talk about this because it's going to become important. But there are problems with this gearbox. For instance, if the car has been stalled overnight and you want to leave in the next morning, if you immediately, after starting the car, put it in drive, then the car may hesitate to move forward. That is one of the problems. And I had this with mine. But there is a way to fix that. The second problem that you may experience is uh, pretty rough shifting. That again, is something you could fix as long as there is no technical defect. And in most cases, there is no technical defect. So before we get to all these different points, I want to go through a short explanation on what this gearbox is, in short, how it works, the controls on it and the shifting pattern. And then we get into the calibration and actually the fixes for both the rough shifting the fact that it revs up high and sometimes hesitates to shift and of course the cold start departure. But before we get to the defects themselves and how you can correct it, I think it might be wise to have a look on that gearbox, what this gearbox is all about, but also about why we have a 10-speed gearbox. And the question often pops up, do you need a 10-speed gearbox? Is a 4-speed or a 6-speed not enough? The whole purpose of a gearbox is to let the car accelerate within the limits of the engine. The engine has a limited amount of RPMs and it has a limited amount of power. So when the car is at a standstill and you want to depart, you have to overcome that initial inertia. There is a lot of torque required on the wheels. And you do that by selecting a low gear. Once the car is moving, then the RPMs are going up and then you reach a certain speed and at that certain point you're running out of RPMs and then it's time to shift to the next gear and this is how you keep shifting up so at the highest gear you do not have a lot of torque on the rear wheels anymore but you have a high speed and a moderate RPM if you now go uphill with the car then most likely you all have experienced it you will have to shift down because you don't have the torque anymore so if you're shifting down, the RPMs go up, but you get more power. So that's the whole purpose of a gearbox. If I was to draw a curve of speed on the horizontal line and torque on the vertical line, and I would inject now four gears, then you would see that the total amount of speed would have to be divided over four gears. In other words, every gear has to span a lot of RPM, so the RPM span is very wide. If I now do the same with a 10-speed gearbox, then the RPM span for every gear can be a lot smaller because I have more gears to shift through. And that is done intentionally, so a 10-speed gearbox is far more efficient. So on the screen we have now a gearbox with four gears and we want to get to the maximum speed, so from 0 to 100. And we're going to do this by walking through the gears and within every gear we're going to run through the different RPMs. Uh, when you put it into a gear, that first gear, you probably run about a thousand RPMs. You're going to accelerate, RPMs will build up and let's say it builds up to about 5,000 and then you're shifting to the second gear, the RPMs are falling down maybe to 2,000 again. Then you start revving up again in second gear until you're back to 5,000 RPMs. So you keep going and back between 2,000 and 5,000 RPMs in every gear to build up that final speed until you're in the fourth gear. And once you're in fourth gear, then you want to maintain that speed. So if you're cruising along on the highway 
very flat surface, then you don't need a lot of torque. And if you don't need a lot of torque, you want to have a maximum fuel consumption as well. And you want to keep your RPMs as low down as possible. And that is what you see in the graph on the right hand side. So every engine has what we call a sweet spot. This is the best operating point for any given condition you're driving in the car. So on the highway, high speed driving, but uh, not a lot of resistance on the car. You don't need a lot of torque. You want to have low RPMs and you don't need a lot of torque. So that a white circle there, that sweet spot isn't the right one. That should come down to around the 2000 RPM location. And then you have a very efficient gearbox. Now with a four-speed gearbox, you can immediately see that this is going to be difficult. Now that you have seen that we have actually a sweet spot, we can now move that sweet spot around depending on what the condition is for the car. So for instance, if you're pulling a heavy load, then the sweet spot will be somewhere else to the maximum peak of your power, but also high consumption. But if you're cruising along the highway without a heavy load, then obviously that sweet spot will move down and it will move to lower RPMs, less torque because you don't need that one, and also less fuel consumption. And that is exactly what this gearbox is doing. It is trying to run the engine on the most optimum performance by properly shifting. And that is controlled by what we call a transmission control unit. Now, a lot of people say that this gearbox is what we call a robotic gearbox. Well, it is not. It is a straightforward gearbox. The gearbox itself has 10 gears. It has six clutches and six solenoids that would drive the gears. And then I have a torque converter and we have a one-way clutch and a bunch of sensors and electronics. That's all there is in this gearbox. Now let's have a look on how that gearbox really looks like. So here we have the 10-speed automatic gearbox from Ford and GM. It's a combined design. And as you can see inside the gearbox, it's really nothing any different than the other automatic gearbox besides the fact that we now have six clutches. And the six clutches are needed to drive the different gears. The clutches are controlled by solenoids. And a solenoid is a electromagnetic uh, system which is pushing forward a rod uh, as soon as power is applied on a coil. The more power is applied, the more forward the rod is pushed. So that's the mechanism by which the transmission control module is controlling the clutches and engaging or disengaging the clutches. And of course, we have six clutches because we have so many gears. Now, that is not different than any other automatic gearbox where you also have clutches. That is exactly the same kind of methodology or approach with the big difference that here we are engaging or disengaging the clutches through solenoids so electrical whereby in more traditional gearboxes you would see a hydraulic valve mechanism not in this case there's also in the front which is the green part this is our torque converter like on any other automatic gearbox and then we have an oil pump which is sitting off center now these oil pumps uh, have been known to be a problem, especially the uh, two wheels on it, and they have been recalled. I believe the Ford Rangers from 2018 to 2019 have been recalled for that exact problem, but mine is a 2021, so that is not the issue on my car. But if you have an older one, then you might want to check if your was recalled or not. There's also a auxiliary uh, oil pump, I would say, uh, that is an electrical one. And that one is responsible for the start-stop mechanism. You know, if you have a car that uh, stops the engine in front of a traffic light because you stopped uh, for environmental reasons, then the line pressure needs to be kept up because, of course, if the engine stops, the oil pump starts running. So that's why you have an electrical oil pump inside the gearbox that will keep up the line pressure or the oil pressure in the gearbox. So whenever the light goes green, you can take off without any problem. And for the rest, uh, there is a one-way clutch and a bunch of sensors that are sitting inside the gearbox. That gearbox is controlled by a transmission control module. And this is actually a computer. So let's have a look on how that works. And after that, we'll come back and we'll talk about one of those fake stories 
that the gearbox is self-learning. The 10-speed automatic gearbox is controlled by what we call a transmission control module. This is basically a computer with software in it and often you hear that people flash the control module well that means they're putting new software onto the transmission control module. It is the transmission control module that will determine the shifting behavior of your gearbox and to do that it's going to use a bunch of output signals. There are six output signals going to the solenoids and it's called SSA through SSF. And these solenoids will then engage the clutches or disengage the clutches. And that will create the shifting. There's another signal going to the solenoid, which is determining the line pressure. And you need lots of line pressure to spin around that torque converter. This is what we call the LPC solenoid signal. And then finally, we have the TCC solenoid signal, which is going to the torque converter clutch. These are the output signals that are driving the gearbox. But it wouldn't mean nothing if there was no feedback mechanism. The transmission control module must know what is going on and it also must know what is requested from it. So on the left hand side, we see input signals. And the first input signal is what we call the TFT sensor. This is a temperature sensor, which is measuring the temperature of the transmission fluid. So in a cold morning, uh, that sensor will detect a low temperature and it will signal that by the TFT sensor to the TCM and the TCM will then decide, okay, I have a cold liquid inside my gearbox. I'm going to allow higher refs before I start shifting. And this is what we see on our Ford Ranger. The RPMs seem to go up fairly high, in my opinion, to 2,500 RPMs on a cold engine before it starts shifting. But once the uh, liquid is at a proper temperature, the TFT sensor reports it back saying, okay, you know what, I'm at the right temperature now. And then the TCM module will lower that shifting point in terms of RPM. There's also a sensor called TSS. Uh, this is the shift quality sensor, which is fitted inside the gearbox and provides a feedback on how well the shifting is happening. We've got clutch states, so the states of the clutches need to be known, and this is the ISSA sensor and the ISSB sensor, and we got the shift quality sensor to OSS. And all that are feedback mechanisms to the TCM so that it knows how well it is actually working. There's one more sensor, which is called the TR sensor. This is the sensor that is checking the position of the stick or the selector. So if you put the stick to park, then it knows it. If you want to take off and you put it to drive or reverse, then that signal is sent to the transmission control module and it knows you want to reverse or you want to drive or you want to go into sports mode. And that will trigger different things and shifting patterns inside the transmission control module. But of course, those are not the only things because you need to know about your the pedal, the throttle, and there is no input signal directly from the throttle to the TCM. Remember that your engine is controlled by an engine management system, and that's the one that controls the power, the injection, the position of the throttle. It will determine how much engine speed it's running. It determines the engine torque, and it will flag all these parameters like engine speed, like engine torque estimate, like a commanded engine torque, and so on over the CAN bus towards the transmission control module. And for those of you that don't know what the CAN bus is, this is a bus, an electronics cable with signaling on it, which is balanced where all the modules in a car exchanging information over. So there's a lot of feedback mechanisms happening to the TCM module. So we got output, it drives the gearbox, we got feedback as an input signal from the gearbox inside, and then we have, of course, the demands coming from the external side on the canvas. When the operating system and the firmware is loaded onto the transmission control module, it has what we call a default shifting pattern. And that default shifting pattern is based on 50% of throttle, so you're depressing the pedal for 15% down, and then it's going to shift through the gears and it's supposed to shift between 1500 and 2000 RPMs. It can vary a little bit and it will shift gently up. 
Once you are reaching the seventh or the eighth gear, then you can give a bit more throttle and then it's going to shift to gears eight, nine and ten. And it does this at different speeds. And that is the default behavior. Now it's important for the transmission control unit to learn about the car because it communicates with your engine over the CAN bus. That gearbox can be fitted in a Ford Mustang. That gearbox can be fitted in a Ford Ranger Wild Track. It can be fitted in a mono cabin, in a dual cabin, and it can be fitted with different engine sizes. So it really needs to learn um, in what type of a car it is, and it really needs to learn to adjust to calibrate itself to the most optimum. And therefore, you need to take it through a learning cycle. And this is what people refer to that the gearbox is self-learning. Yes, the gearbox is kind of self-learning, but you need to take it through a stepped procedure. And in fact, you have to do it a couple of times. And you need to do this each time you load that software again in the transmission control unit, but also if you work on the engine, because that may also have an effect on how the engine performs and specifically on the engine management unit. Maybe you, you do some fixing on the fuel map. So anything that will change the behavior, the performance of that engine, whatever you change there or actually loading new software on the transmission control module, you need to go through this learning process. It is not what some people say that if you drive the car, the car will learn from you. And if your wife drives it, we'll learn from your wife. No, it doesn't do that. It has a baseline and we need to calibrate that baseline on the specifics on this car. And that's a procedure you need to run through. And we'll do that in a few minutes. Now let's go back to the two problems that I've had with mine. And honestly, I've been many times to the Ford dealership. And each time I get the story, sir, this is an automatic gearbox. You need to learn to drive with an automatic. It will learn from you. That, of course, is all nonsense. Uh, yes, it's an automatic gearbox. Yes, it has a, a computer attached to it, you know, the transmission control module, and it talks with my engine control module, all that. But it's not learning from me. So each time I went, I was kind of ignored. So I decided to dig out some things, and that's why I made this video now. And what I'm about to tell you has worked perfectly for me. So the first problem I have run into in the past was after stalling the car for a night or two nights or three days or four days or five days, no matter how long, but if you have it parked aside for a while and you get in the car and you start it cold and you take off immediately, my car often doesn't move immediately. It's like it's thinking about it. Yeah, I'm revving up, but it's not moving. And then all of a sudden it moves forward. It almost is like a slipping clutch on a manual gearbox. That I told to the Ford dealership and they don't believe me really. They have seen it because I left the car once overnight. And this seems to be uh, an issue with the uh, transmission fluid, which is kind of uh, flown back into the sump. Uh, so the pump needs to pump it up. And by the time that drive line or the pressure line is hitting actually, the uh, torque converter to spin that rotor around to push the car forward. It takes a bit of time. So the workaround for that is very simple. Get in your car, start the engine, leave it in park, and let it run maybe for 30, 40 seconds. You know, get your seatbelt on, get all settled, turn on your radio, and then take off and drive. And you'll see, you won't have that issue. It always drives away nicely. Now, if you take off immediately, it may not move ahead immediately. It may actually jump forward and you will have erratic shifting or you stay high on high RPMs before it shifts. It's like it's doubting to shift. And in fact, I have even a couple of misshifts as well with a clunk. So you don't want that to happen really. So let it warm up a little bit. So you build up the pressure and then it will work just fine. Is that a defect? I think it is. But then again, um, that's what it is. So that problem you can fix very easily. The second problem is, of course, erratic behavior of the shifting. And that is because people have not taken it through a learning curve. As I explained before, if you load the software on the uh, transmission control uh, module, or if you load new software on your engine management system, 
or you do any kind of work on the engine that changes the performance, you really should take it through the learning curve. And the learning curve is a procedure and it's very simple. You clear all the faults on the ECU, so the, uh, the transmission control module, so you have no more engine sign at all. Uh, and you can do this over the OBD2 plug that you have on your car with a very simple OBD2 reader. You don't have to, but that's a good starting point. Drive the car until it's at normal operating temperature. Then uh, select a flat road. So don't go uphill, don't go downhill. Stop the car, put it in drive and accelerate fairly slowly with 15% throttle. So you depress the pedal with about 15%. You'll see the car is going to start shifting through the gears. It may actually skip a gear, like second gear, it may skip that one. That is quite normal. But it will shift up, and then once you hit around the 7 to 8 gear, you give a bit more throttle until you hit the 8, 9, and 10 gear, and then you slowly slow down and then uh, you stop the car and then there's a couple of maneuvers you have to do. You have to put the brake pedal up a few times for a few seconds, then you have to move the stick back and forward a bit. And uh, it's on the screen what you have to do and you do this about six times in a row. So you repeat all these steps about six times and then you will have uh, the transmission control uh, module in a very good condition. It will have learned from your car what it should do and you will have most likely a perfect shifting sequence. That has worked for me and this is what I recommend you do. Uh, unless somebody else is out there on the internet that uh, says just the opposite, this is what I found through third parties and it works. So I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did and I'll see you in my next video. And please, by all means, if you have comments, let me know.